Hello everyone, it's Odumayawa Victor Ogunshola again and today I'm here with something very interesting in the field of business management. Uh, today we are going back to the basics, we are going back to the very foundation of uh, business management. So today we are looking at the evolution of management. So we are looking about the history of managerial thoughts, the history behind managerial thinking. That's what we are looking at today. So if you come with me to the whiteboard, I'm going to take us through the very first beginnings of managerial thinking to what we have going on today in management. Thank you very much and enjoy. So again, we are talking about uh, theories or evolution of management. So when we talk about this topic, we can ask ourselves the question, how has management traveled over time? Where did it begin from? How did it go to the next stage? And where are we exactly now in the thoughts of management, in managerial thoughts? So I'd like to start with the very first era, which is the pre-classical era. In the very first era, we had what we know as the pre-classical era of management. And in this era, the main managerial thinking was that employees and management need to come together and collaborate in order to achieve organizational effectiveness. Okay, so I'm going to put that down. In these times, yeah, the thinking was that employees employees and management employees and management uh, come together come together to achieve organizational organizational effectiveness and that was the pre classical era. And this era was before the 1900s. Before the 1900s. And the proponents of this era were uh, theorists, management thinkers like Robert Owen and Charles Babbage. Robert Owen. Robert Owen. And. Charles Babbage. And that's the pre classical era of management. Employees and management were working together to achieve organizational effectiveness. This was before the 1900s, and major proponents were Robert Owen and Charles Babbage. If you come with me, we go to another era which is uh, more interesting. Another era which is more interesting, and that is the classical era. Classical, classical era. And the classical era of management can be divided into two schools of thoughts. The scientific management schools of thought and the bureaucratic management schools of thought. I'll put that down quickly, please. Eh? So classical era, we have... Uh, Two schools of thoughts, like I said. Bureaucratic management and scientific uh, management. The proponent for the bureaucratic management was uh, Max Weber. Max Weber from Germany. Max Weber from Germany. While the proponents for the scientific management era were uh, W. F. Uh, uh, Taylor, that's Winslow Frederick Taylor, and uh, Henry Fayol. Henri Fayol. Henri Fayol. These were the proponents. And the major management thinking in this era was that 
there's only one best way standardization standardization of procedures they saw human beings as economic beings Instead of to recognize the employees as human beings, they saw them as economic beings who should work, 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 and produce more, and produce more, and produce more. So, so humans, um, uh, sorry, employees, employees seen as economic beings. So, if you worked in that era, the management didn't see you as a, as a human being. They saw you as an economic being who should work, 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 and produce more and more. It was about uh, maximizing, maximizing efficiency. And these were the thoughts behind this uh, 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 era. Okay? And uh, Max Weber came up with his bureaucratic management where there was all about control and uh, division of labor. So we can see how manager, managerial thinking has traveled over time and all this was happening. Uh, the scientific management was happening in the 1900s. 1900. And uh, bureaucratic management came around the, the World War, and that was uh, 1945. And you can see how management has traveled from the thoughts behind the pre-classical era to the thoughts behind the scientific management era to what we had in the 1945s of the bureaucratic management era. Now we go on to the next managerial thinking, uh, which is... Uh, we go on to the next managerial thinking, which is the human relations. Human relations era. The human relations era also dates back to the 1945s. Yeah? 1945. The main proponent, the main proponent of the human relations era is Elton Mike. Elton. Mayu, okay, and this era say, unlike the classical era where human beings were seen as economic beings, in the human relations era, human beings were recognized to have emotions, to have feelings, and this was the era they talked about social factors at work. So, Kelton Mayu, and what were they proposing? Okay, uh, um, employees. Employees have feelings. Employees have feelings. Employees have needs. This era looked into the social factors at work. Social factors at work. Under the human relations era, Theories such as the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, theories such as Douglas MacGregor's theory X and Y came up under the human relations era. So, uh, theories that came up in the human relations era were Abraham Maslow's, Abraham uh, Maslow, Maslow, hierarchy, hierarchy of needs. Uh, MacGregor's, MacGregor's theory X and Y. These theories came out under this era. Let me quickly explain the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. For Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this era says employees have needs. Employees on the lowest part of the ladder have physiological needs and that is followed by safety needs and this is followed by social needs 
and this is followed by self-esteem and at the very top of the employee ladder we have the self-actualization so this is the pyramid of the Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs okay again physiological needs safety needs social needs self-esteem and self actualization at the apex of the pyramid Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs it means that employee at one time or the other would have any of these needs and the more employees uh, get promoted the more important they are to the organization the more they climb on that ladder of the hierarchy of needs now talking about Douglas McGregor's theory X and Y McGregor says that employees are either Jory X kind of workers, that is lazy workers who don't like to work. And he says for those kind of workers, the relations that management should have to, with them is to kick them in the ass, punish them, be coercive towards them, and that's when they would work. On, on the other hand, for the other kind of workers, the theory Y kind of workers, Douglas McGregor suggested that if employees love work, if they meet their targets, if they come to work uh, early and they do their work, uh, management must um, celebrate such employees, encourage such employees, and motivate such employees. And that's the concept behind theory X and Y, and that's also under human relations. After the human relations era, we go on to a, another era entirely, and that's the uh, systems era. And that's the systems era, okay? Systems era, okay? And the systems era came about around the 1950s, around the 1950s, the systems era, and the main proponent there was Kenneth Bowden. Kenneth, is this the spelling of Kenneth? Uh, N, maybe Kenneth, Kenneth Bolden, and he was the main proponent of that era. And what he came to say in that era is that all organizations are open systems. Okay, I'm going to put that down. All organizations, all organizations, yeah, are open systems. I.e., that is. Every business organization, every kind of organization relates with the business environment in which it operates in. Okay? All organizations, all organizations, all organizations, yeah, relate with the environment in which they operate. This simply means whatever goes on in the business environment will affect the business organization. For example, if an organization operates in an environment where there is economic recession, of course there will be low turn, out, turn up of customers and that will affect sales and that will affect profit. On the other hand, if an organization operates in an environment where there is economic boom, there will be so much customers, there will be so much profit, and there will be so much competitive advantage or uh, 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 profit for, for the organization. So whatever goes on in the business environment will directly affect the business organization. That is what the systems approach is saying. And now we go to the very last approach in the history of uh, managerial thoughts. And that very last approach is known as the contingency approach. Contingency, contingency approach. And the contingency approach came around in the 1960s, 1960s contingency approach. And the brains or proponents behind this approach are Bonds and Stalker. Bonds and Stalker as well as Lorenz and Lush. These are the proponents behind the contingency approach era. And what is the contingency theory saying? Unlike the pre-classical era where it says the only one best way for organizations is for employees and management to work together to achieve uh, 
organizational effectiveness. The classical era is saying the only one best way is to maximize efficiency, is to see the employees as economic beings, to have tight control over the employees. The human relations era is saying that the only one best way is to, is to promote social factors as work at work and recognize that employees have feelings and have needs. The system approach says the only one best way is to see that all organizations are open systems. The contingency approach, however, says that there is no one best way. Okay? No one best way. This approach, the contingency approach, suggests that before an organization can determine its managerial style or managerial thinking, it should be dependent on three factors. Okay? And those three factors are Firstly, the size of the organization, okay? So, it should be no one best way, no one best way, yeah? It should, that is, managerial thinking should depend on one, size of the organization. Is it a multinational large company or is it a small business? That would determine the kind of managerial thinking. The second thing is the business environment in which that organization exists in. Is it in Africa? Is it in Asia? Is it in Europe? Is it in America? The business environment in the locality where the business op uh, operates in will determine the managerial thinking, okay? So, the size of the organization, the business, the business environment, environment in which uh, you operate in, operate in. So, the business environment in which you operate in will determine the kind of managerial approach. And last point there from the contingency approach is the level of technology involved in the organization. The level of technology involved in the organization will help determine the managerial approach of the organization. So I put it down, level of technology. Like I said at the very start of this video, this is a video very useful for all university students, especially students who are in their first year of university studying management. This is the evolution of management. This is the history of management. It's also called theories of management. This is how management has traveled over time. From the pre-classical era, before the 1900s, where employees and management were working together for organizational effectiveness, to the 1900s and the 1945s, where we have the classical era, where it was about scientific management and bureaucratic management, there was tight control, there was division of labor, it was about maximizing efficiency. This was the era Henry Ford said, keep producing those cars as long as it is black. And that's the classical era. And then we go to the human relations era, where, it's like, hold a minute, the classicalists cannot treat employees like this. Employees are not economic beings, but employees are human beings. So social factors at work was being considered, and theories like Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Douglas McGregor's hierarchy of needs were put into consideration. If you, for the McGregor's theory, um, uh, theory, if you are an X type of worker, you are lazy and therefore you will be punished. And if you are a Y kind of worker, you work hard, you will get the benefits and rewards. And then we moved into the systems approach in the 1950s, where every business organization was seen as an open system. What goes on in the environment will affect our organization. And lastly, the contingency approach in the 1960s with proponents such as Bonds and Stalker and Lawrence and Lodge say, hold on, wait a minute, there is no one best way. For us to determine the managerial thinking of this organization, three questions. What is the size of this organization? Is it big or small? 
what business environment do we operate in? What is the culture of the business environment? What are the policies in the business environment? This will affect the type of managerial thinking. And lastly, technology is an important factor. The level of technology in the organization will determine the managerial thinking of that uh, organization. Thank you very much. That's the topic, evolution of management. Oh, thank you very much. Now, you know that I will not go until I talk about my passion for my continent, Africa. Are you an African anywhere in the world? I say to you, keep doing everything you can to walk towards the unity of the African people. Keep doing everything you can to walk towards the development of the African continent. Africa must develop. Thank you. Okay, now it's about feedback. And as you know, I'd like to get feedback from you. Do you think this is a nice video? Do you have something for us to improve on? Please send us an email at dmayorforyou at gmail.com. And that's Delta Mango Alpha, Yankee Oscar Romeo, for umbrella at gmail.com. I'd like to say thank you in English language. I'm in the Netherlands, so I say thank you. Well. I'm a Yoruba man from Nigeria, West Africa. I say Esheo. Bye.